not thankful that I was in the back crying and trying to fix myself up before I came over here. That song made me emotional. It made me think about my pastor when I was in college, the elder brother Fuller. He used to say, it's about being a pilgrim, folks. It's about Calvary. Never forget about Calvary. In Jesus' name. I want to begin by giving honor to Pastor Blankenship, Pastor Bimbry. Well, I'm thankful for the opportunity to share what I have been studying and praying about lately. Also, Brother Jones, welcome. You know, being a Dallas Cowboys fan when they told me that Brother Jerry Jones was coming to speak to us. I was expecting somebody else. I didn't think he was a brother, but I'm glad to have this Brother Jerry Jones with us today. <laughs> My text today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. If you have your Bibles and on the screen, Romans chapter 10, verses 13 through 15 from the King James Version. For whatsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, or sorry, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Please be seated. If what I'm about to say sounds familiar, I believe it is because God has a word for us as a body. In his most recent sermon, Brother Jeremiah used some of the same thoughts I had felt in my heart when I was preparing this message a few weeks ago, including singing the exact song I was planning on reciting today. I don't sing, but I'll take that as confirmation that God is speaking to us. There's an old joke about people from Texas. You may have heard me tell before. How do you know somebody's from Texas? We will tell you. <laughs> you can all be very sure where I'm from. I think everybody knows that I'm from the great state of Texas. When it comes to what you believe, though, do the people you work with, go to school with, socialize with, do they know that you are a Christian? Do they know about Acts 2 and 38? Do your friends and acquaintances know who you're going to vote for on Tuesday because everybody's going to vote on Tuesday, right? Do they know who you're going to vote for this year but have no idea where you go to church? While not much good comes from the entertainment industry, I saw a television program once that perfectly illustrates the importance of evangelism. In the program, one of the characters borrows the car of her boyfriend of several years. During the course of running errands, she turns on the radio and realizes that every preset station is for a Christian radio station. She is confused because she does not think her boyfriend is a Christian. She is equally shocked to find a Jesus fish decal on the trunk of his car. After discussing the matter with several friends, she confronts her boyfriend and asks him if he is a Christian. He says he is, and she immediately asks him if it bothers him that she is not a Christian. He responds that it doesn't bother him at all because he's not the one going to hell. <laughs> she becomes enraged and despondent, and he asks why. Typical man, he asks why. She responds that while she does not believe in hell, he does, and he should have said something. He should have done something. She is angry that he never tried to save her. If you're unfamiliar with Penn Jillette, he's an American magician, juggler, comedian, musician, inventor, actor, and best-selling author. He's a lot of things. Best known for his work with the magic and comedy act Penn and Teller, he is also an outspoken atheist. He's a very famous atheist. A few years ago, Gillette posted a video on YouTube in which he discusses an encounter he had with a Christian business person after one of his shows. The man had been to the previous night's show and had returned to witness to Gillette, the atheist, and give him a small Bible that included his personal contact information. Gillette describes the man as a polite person living his life right and a very, very, very good man. He made such a positive impression, in fact, that Gillette declared the following, and I quote, it's a lengthy quote, I've always said that I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and a hell and people could be going to hell and not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward, and atheists who think that people shouldn't proselytize, just leave me alone, keep your religion to yourself, how much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt there was a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it and that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that, end quote. I am not a singer, so I'm going to close by reciting the lyrics to the song My House is Full by Lanny Wolf. 
There is peace and contentment in the Father's house today. Lots of food on his table, and no one is turned away. There's singing and laughter as the hours pass by, but a hush calms the singing as the Father sadly cries. My house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today? It seems my children all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my field. Push away from the table. Look out through the window pane. Just beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain, and it's white unto harvest, but the reapers, where are they? In the house, oh, can't the children hear the father sadly say, my house is full, but my field is empty. Who will go and work for me today? It seems my children all want to stay around my table, but no one wants to work in my field.